Now this week there was so many items to cover, I actually have this as a two-part series. The first one, which just released about an hour ago, has 19 different folding knives, and this is going to be the remainder for this week. Now, I put a link to that other video down below, but if you're interested in flashlights, some multi-tools, yeah, we're gonna talk about that in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, this flashlight was heavily requested um, over the course of the last year. I just never got around to it. It never had a, the highest waterproof rating, and I usually prefer something that is IPX7 or higher. This one doesn't quite fall into that range, but is still water resistant. What is kind of neat about this is that it has a rotating head, allowing it to be both a right angle flashlight as well as something that you can use kind of in line. And it has a reversible clip, so if you wanted to attach it to your hat, you absolutely could. You could have it oriented in different directions attached to your hat. And I think that the fact that it also has a magnet, this is a very versatile piece of equipment. It has two modes, so it's not particularly complicated, and uh, they work very well, so high and low and you just click between the two. And very bright. I didn't expect it to be this bright, but I'm very impressed by it. It's capable of using not only a standard AA, but also a 14500. For something that comes in, actually I paid $12 for it, literally it was ridiculously priced. Uh, it's hard to argue with a flashlight that is this good. In fact, I added it to my flashlights under 40 list um, right away after playing with it a little bit. I really do think that this is a reasonable consideration and probably one of the better budget considerations under that $20 price point. So really good job from Nikron. There's some other flashlights from this brand that I want to check out in the future. They've just done a really good job with this one. And it does have a side switch that is very proud. So I want to mention this before we move on to the next thing. In order to turn this light on, you can't just accidentally touch it. You actually have to hold the button for a few seconds and then it will come in on the low mode. And it does not appear to have mode memory, which I'm actually very appreciative of. It always comes in on that low and that is really, really nice. So two modes, low and high, very simple to use. Excellent flashlight for a budget and uh, yeah, sub $20. You cannot go wrong with that. Now we're gonna switch gears for just a minute and talk about this awesome little tool from Roxxon. This might be my favorite thing that Roxxon has made in recent memory. And they have a couple of really cool offerings. This might take the cake. So first of all, it's very, very small. So I like the size of it. It is not something I would necessarily put on my keychain, but it is absolutely a fifth pocket carry without any issues whatsoever. It has a nail clipper, which has a spring-loaded arm, and I actually really like it. I've used it a bit, and it, it does work. It works really well. It's kept in place by a little magnet right there and just works like that. Just pull it out with your nail. Now on the other side, you can see we have four implements here, but you can't easily get access to them. What's amazing is how they've created a solution for this. You just press this little tab and it deploys your tools. I love this. And it fans them out in such a way that you get easy access. So if I wanted to grab all four of these, I could do so. And funny enough, I can actually have found a way to do this kind of um, one-handed if I wanted to. It's not ideal, but it's absolutely doable. Just try to avoid grabbing the knife while you do it. And then you can absolutely deploy all four of these. Select the one you want, which is, you know, let's say I want the scissor and I'll pull that out and then we're ready to rock and roll. Now, quick note about the scissor. I have had this spring pop out on me. Now, right now it's not doing that, but just keeping in mind that that does happen to some people. I have seen a mixed bag of reviewers. So if you have that issue, there's a couple of solutions. You can obviously return it, get a new one, or you can take it apart, bend that spring in a little bit, and then put it back together. It's up to you how you wanna approach that problem if you encounter it. Now, I wanna mention that this scissor is actually quite good and it actually does cut the paracord cleanly, which is quite impressive. Now you see that just happened. Uh, it's quite impressive for a small multi-tool to be able to do this that isn't named Victorinox. They usually have the better scissors. So I'm pretty happy with the scissors with the exception of that spring issue. Now, in addition to that, we have two additional tools in here. We have a can opener and uh, 
bottle opener. Now I have tried the can opener on here and you can see that I've sort of rolled the edge where it got really thin. This kind of brings up one downside in that they are using 3CR for these implements. I would love them to upgrade at the very minimum to the 5CR, which will be able to heat treat higher in HRC, the hardness, and that will make it last a lot longer. So something to keep in mind with this, it, it also got really thin, so that could be part of the issue, but I would love to see in the future this tool get upgraded to a 5CR. It also has a flathead on the end that is worth noting. Now, I think probably my favorite tool in this is gonna have to be the Phillips. They've done a lot of improvements compared to even their player-based multi-tools. This is a thicker stock. It's wider this way, and it still integrates with their bit kit system. So really, really good design on this. And it has a nail file on the side, which is inserted into it, which means that they didn't have to overheat treat the steel, make it brittle in order to incorporate a file. I really like this as a solution because realistically, you're not gonna be filing a big thing of wood or anything complicated with a small tool. It's basically just gonna be a nail file or hygiene kind of file. So I really like the way they have done that. Now, the last thing we have here, oh, by the way, I should mention all of this stuff locks. The last thing we have here is the blade. Now, when you pull it out, you can you then grab the blade with your fingernail. And this will also lock and does a really good job. This is actually a nice little blade. And uh, yeah, not much more to say here. I believe the blade itself is actually a 5CR. So a little bit better, a little higher qual quality steel than the other components. So what do I think? I think that this is actually probably one of the best offerings that Roxxon currently has. I keep an eye on it, see if it's on sale. If it is, you know, that's great. I'll mention it right here, but otherwise I will leave a link to it down below. Definitely worth checking out if you like a small fifth pocket carry that covers a lot of bases. Now, this is the first of two flashlights we're gonna talk about from a company called Skill Hunt. Now, this is the MIX-7. Now, you can see seven emitters. I'm sure that's part of the naming of this thing. Each of these flashlights are basically the same, except that we have a cool white emitter here and we have a warm white emitter here. Now, the difference is going to be primarily in output and, of course, having a high CRI. So we have 2300 lumens max on this light and 1500 lumens max on this light. But I think the way this is designed, it's less about how bright it is and more about the versatility of the light. So as you can see, there are a lot of different emitters. Let me show you what those actually do. So if I hold press the button, like I would normally get moonlight in most flashlights, the same thing is true here, except that you have a bunch of different options that you can save when you click that button. So right now I'm actually in the UV mode, which is that center emitter. And this will let us kind of see things a little bit differently in the light. You can kind of pick up little bits of scraps, little hairs and that kind of thing. It lets you see stuff that, well, you wouldn't normally be able to see with your naked eye. So that's very cool. Now, if I hold press, I'll cycle through a bunch of different modes, including the moonlights, which you can obviously set up. Then we have red, green, blue, and then it goes back to the UV. So really, really cool setup, very high in versatility. Now, this uses an 18350 battery, and it does have a proprietary charger, but the cool thing is, is that this light will use any 18350. Now, there is a competitor that looks awfully similar, that is the Seeker 4 Mini from Olight. Now, it's definitely a much bigger flashlight, but this can only use batteries that are built in and work with kind of Olight's system. Now, they ensure they basically uh, cover that battery in warranty. It's part of the reason that they do it, but it doesn't give it as much versatility if you wanted to replace the battery down the line. This actually has a combination that I really, really like. The other thing, and we'll bring it back in one more time, that I like about this light, it has the option of actually going bezel down in the pocket, where when I put this flashlight in my pocket, which I have to kind of do this way, every time I put my hand in my pocket, I run it across this crenulated bezel, and it does not feel particularly good. So I like that this can go bezel down, and they've even cut a notch inside, the, they've cut a section of the body so that it sits nicely with 
the pocket clip, which is a nice reversible clip. So I think that this has a couple one-ups on that Olight. And uh, yeah, it still has the ability to charge without taking out the battery, but you can still bay charge the 18350. So really, really good design. The only difference is going to be with this light having the warm emitter, which I gotta say, I prefer for this type of light, which is very floody, which means it's going to be good for things up close. So um, the basic gist here is that I think this is a good bench top or work light. And for that reason, maybe you want to consider it. The fact that it is so floody, I think really helps. Now there are three modes, the kind of low, medium and high, right? And then you can access turbo. So double press for turbo. And what's interesting about most skill hunt flashlights is some of those modes, whether it's turbo or low or medium, have alternative outputs that you can select and then it will memorize. So every time you cycle through, you'll be able to find them. So just an example with turbo, I can hold press when I'm in it and I can cycle between two different turbo modes. So one stays on for a minute, the other one stays on for three minutes, the, the lower output, and then runs for a longer time. So you could pick which one you want, which one makes sense to you to access when you double click. So that's pretty much the flashlight, the Skill Hunt uh, MIX7. Uh, this is a very short <laughs> review, so obviously we're not doing beam shots or anything like that, but it's kind of a good introduction to what they have available. And yeah, I really like this light more than I expected to. And I think a lot of it has to do with how it's carried. It should, some, it should be something that companies don't overlook. And I think in this case, they did it right. Now, the next flashlight we're gonna talk about is also from Skill Hunt. Now, this is the H150. I've already reviewed the inline version of this flashlight, and it's a very good one. It's able to use an 18, uh, sorry, a 14500 and a double A. It also can use lithium batteries if you wanna buy the disposables. I don't recommend them. This flashlight also has a built-in charging port, the same as the last light we just talked about. But unlike that one, this has more options, right? You can use off-the-shelf batteries, you can use the included 14500, you can use other 14500 batteries if you wanna use those. Some of them even have a Type-C charging port. So the versatility is really high while maintaining the IPX8 waterproofing that this has because of not having that silicon cover. It really is a bit better when it comes to water. Now, I have heard from some people, and it's worth mentioning, that older generations of this, not the newer ones, but the older generations, can corrode when exposed to things like salt water. So that could cause a potential issue if you're gonna use the charging port, but especially with models like this that use a 14500, I don't think it's as big of a problem. Now, this does have a magnetic tail, which is a nice little addition, and it this one is a high CRI version. So you'll notice there's a theme here. They have both cool white and a high CRI version of pretty much every light that they make. I love that about this company. I wish other companies would do that because there's a bunch of people like me who don't have the best vision and they really can use things that that are nice on the eyes and let me tell you this is a much nicer let me let me turn it down that's way too bright uh, this is a much nicer light to look at over a long period of time than a cool white it just is so i love that it has that option now in this case the warm white is a lower output in lumens, but actually has a higher candela. So it can reach about the same distance, even though it is a lower maximum output of around 450 lumens. So I really think that's that's a good thing to mention here. You can see the, the peak intensity or candela rating using the XPL2, it's 2100, but it's 2250 with the uh, 519AT. So that's something that's really quite cool. You'll also notice that just like with the last flashlight, there are two different turbo modes, which you can select the same way we did with the last one. And there are also two different moonlight modes with a maximum output of 50 days if you really wanted to. So that's a lot of runtime capable. The only reason I didn't take this one out is I think I'm gonna end up giving this one away at some point. And I have so many flashlights. It's just, I mean, how many does a man need? <laughs> but I like what I'm seeing from Skill Hunt, this is a good offering for sure. And I think it's a nice 
matching uh, platform to their, I can't remember what, I think it's M150 maybe, I can't remember the exact name of the whole thing, but I think it perfectly matches it so you have both a right angle option as well as a direct option. So whatever you like, it comes with head strap as well, it comes with a charging cable, it comes with spare O-rings and a lanyard if you wanna do that as well. There's a little spot on the bottom to attach that if you want. So a lot of different ways to use this light. Not much more to say, another great offering from Skill Hunt, and you can kind of see where they go. They almost always have a combination of high CRI and cool white, and yes, you can get the color variations in any of, any of them. So you can get black with a high CRI, you can get black, uh, orange with a cool white, they all work like that. Next, we have one of two different flashlights from Ace Beam. Now, this they're calling the TAC AA. I really don't like this name. I want to say it right out front. I, I like the design from a from a shape perspective. The output is truly obscene for what you're getting here. But uh, calling it a TAC flashlight is potentially a dangerous thing to do when it doesn't have the most important functionality that defines being a tactical flashlight. What is that? If I click this button, only one thing should happen once I do it. It should come in on turbo, the highest possible output mode. If it doesn't do that, I could not consider it a tactical flashlight. And right now it's saved in its highest mode. So of course it's going to do it. But if I cycle through, which I can do, like in the low, and I turn it off, when I turn it back on, it's still gonna come in on that low mode. So this flashlight, unless it has a hidden mode set that's not listed in the manual, is not a tactical flashlight. So even though they have insane outputs and insane beam intensity, it does not make this flashlight a tactical flashlight. So I just wanna be clear on this point. I love the design. I think it's a very good one. It has 750 lumens max, but with 10,000 candela, which is ridiculous for a flashlight this small, uh, using a double A. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's, it's quite impressive, but not a tactical flashlight. So that's the biggest thing I wanna get out of the way. Now, it only reaches that 750 lumens while using a 3.6, 3.7 volt battery, which is the 14500. And this one actually had, comes with a great battery. This one actually has type C charging built into it. So I really like that. All of that is good. I mean, it's a good flashlight. I just don't like the naming because it's not a tactical flashlight. That is simply untrue. And so just being aware of that, make your decisions you know, with that in mind, okay? If you're thinking that this is going to be a good option for potentially defensive use, don't, please don't, please don't. Go with something that is going to always turn on in a turbo mode the first time every time. Um, it's just, it's a safety issue. And I just wanna say this is a good flashlight. It's a, it's a great offering from Ace Beam. It's just not a tactical flashlight. So just keeping that in mind, I think it's a really cool light. Now, speaking of cool flashlights, this is the second one we're gonna talk about from Ace Beam, and it is my first ever laser flashlight. So, make sure you read this, okay, I'm serious. Uh, don't, don't skip out on the documentation. When you get an LEP, that is a laser flashlight. It is not like a standard flashlight. Now, you can see there's actually two parts to this. There's a standard flashlight over here, and you have the LEP. Now. Let me close this up for just a second. Where, how do I, uh, yeah. So let me start with a couple of cautionary tales here. This light can get you arrested, genuinely, okay? The brightness is so intense. If you shine this in somebody's face, if they're driving or flying, you could cause potential accidents. And so you can actually get arrested for using one of these. And in some cases, not this one, but the slightly more powerful variations might require a license to actually operate. That is how bright we're talking about here. Now, lumen count 
is not as high as you would expect. I think this is about a thousand lumens, but it has like 500,000 candela. Okay, like ridiculous numbers. Okay, so let me let me turn this on for a second. Now we start out in the flashlight and depending on which one you had last is what it comes in on. So this is my first problem with the light. If I, once again, if I think I'm gonna be in a, a closed room, I don't wanna accidentally turn on an LEP. That would be the worst case scenario. So I wish there was a way to directly turn on and off each side of these lights. In fact, I wouldn't mind having a separate set of buttons for this flashlight and this one. That would help a lot. Now, to switch between the two, you click this button just once. This is another problem. This is a bit too easy. Just one light press, and all of a sudden you have access to the LEP. Now, my um, camera, my phone camera, is basically dimming this a lot. You can't tell just how bright this is, but I'm not even looking at the light. I'm looking at it through the viewfinder, and it's still way too bright. It looks like the sun. It's insane. And you can also adjust it. It actually has an adjustment so you can change the dimension of the light. So this is it at its widest, so it can make it really wide. And, um, and obviously when you get close, you can actually kind of find that focal point as well. Now it also will get narrow as well. So there's that. Um, not much more to say. LEPs are quite interesting and there are certain corner cases where they can be useful. I don't think that 99% of people need one of these things. They are some of the coolest pieces of equipment though ever. And this is no exception. I actually kind of like the form factor. I like the combination of features. But going back to the biggest problem is has to be the ease with which you can switch between the two. Now, if I turn it back on, we're once again back in that LEP. I don't know which one it is when I turn on the light. That's a big problem. I also don't like how easy it is to be potentially, oh, just reading a book with your light or whatever it happens to be, which by the way, this is a beautiful, warm CRI, you know, excellent, excellent light. If I were reading a book or doing something up close and I hit this button and all of a sudden the LEP turned on, it would be insane. God forbid it's a mirror or a white piece of paper that's reflecting that light back in my eyes. It's going to be painful. So I really wish that in the future they will find a way to make this switch more deliberate versus what it is right now. And I'd also very much like it to uh, indicate which one it's on or be able to turn in turn on this directly every time. Or maybe it just needs to always come in on this mode no matter what. And in order to get to the LEP, you then have to switch over from there. So that could be a dual solution. So you can keep the same buttons, it always comes in on the normal flashlight, and then one click switches it over to LEP. However, that would exclude it from being used in potential tactical situations because one of the advantages of an LEP is that you can't actually see where the beam is coming from unless it's directly on top of you. So that is one of the corner cases that you can use an LEP for. You really can't see it. It doesn't really show up at all. Like even if, if you look at it from an angle, it's very, it takes a lot for it to eventually show up in your vision. So that's, that's an LEP for you. And this is, uh, this is a crazy light to say the least. I don't think you need it. I was very thankful that East Beam sent one to me because I think it's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. And uh, now I have one. So yeah, just be aware of all of those things. There is a ton of LEP flashlights out there that you can play with. But uh, yeah, now I have, have one and I don't know if I need another, but I have a feeling that I'll end up trying something even more powerful in the future. Let me know. Would you want one of these or not? Now we just went from a flashlight I really don't recommend for everyone to a flashlight I absolutely can recommend to every single person. Now this is the Rovi Vaughn A28. So this is the fourth generation. It's got the dual button set up. It's been reviewed by a lot of different people and it is absolutely excellent. IPX68, I believe, so very waterproof compared to the smaller variations. Very, very bright. 
Uh, this one uh, can reach a thousand lumens, in fact, and has side emitters that have high CRI. So amazing combination. Also UV as well as red. And it's exactly the same with the light that I wanna show you today, except they have changed one key feature that makes it, in my opinion, even better than the A28. This is the A26. Now, if you look at the front, you can see that the emitters are different. This has a plastic lens, and this actually has a domed emitter. You can see the difference here. What this does is this gives the beam a much tighter pattern versus this one, which you can see is floodier. So this is actually going to have more reach or a higher candela rating than the A28. Other than that, it's basically the same light. So I don't really have to rehash it as much as I would otherwise, but let me just quickly go through some of the features of it. I'm not gonna go through the user interface or we'll be here all week. So it has a very complicated user interface. So let me start out with that. Once you learn it, it's very intuitive, but it, it's just keeping in mind that it, it does actually like require a lot of like understanding. So if you're not into something like that, you don't care whether it has all these extra features, you know, go with something simpler. It has a magnet built into the pocket clip, which is a really nice addition. It has quick access to turbo with one press right there, boom. And it also has quick access to moonlight. So I really like all of those features of the light. In addition, it has the same thing on the side. We have the white, the UV, as well as the red emitter. So we have the UV and, and I really like this light. I think that it covers so many different functions that you could run into, like that you might need. This is the equivalent of a multi-tool in flashlight form and the size is fantastic. So much smaller than some of the other flashlights that you might have, but still incredibly bright when you need it, incredibly versatile when you need it. Yeah, I think that this is one of their crowning achievements. I think both the 28 and the 26 are worth considering for different reasons, but because this has side emitters that work good up close, I think having a front light that goes further makes more sense. For me, I prefer the A26 to this variation right here. Whenever I'm working up close, I'm gonna use the, um, sorry, that's the wrong thing. See, even I can't remember. I would use the white light and I would just turn it on like so and then set it up in front of me. That's what I'm going to do if I want to work up close. I'm not gonna use the front emitter nearly as much unless I'm looking further away. And even without that, because there's a secondary beam pattern, so let me turn this off for a second, is because there's a secondary beam pattern right here, you actually get plenty of light that you can use up close as long as you don't need that center hotspot. So you can play around with this. And I think the A26 is probably one of the better lights that they have. I like what they've done with this and definitely can recommend this variation. Keep an eye out because they do go on sale from time to time. Now this is the last flashlight we're gonna talk about. And this is by Nightcore. This is the MT, to a pro. So this is using their new UHI LED. So these LEDs are incredibly efficient, able to generate much more light per the amount of um, voltage. Like it really does show up. And I will tell you that this is probably the brightest to a flashlight, double a flashlight that I have ever seen ever like insane. Now, right now it comes included with this special battery that is type uh, USB C charging, but you can use this with a standard double A, two double A's as well. Now, let me just give you an idea how bright this light is. Um, it's like a, it's a thousand lumens, but has a truly obscene candela rating on top of it. Like this is brighter than most 18650 flashlights that I have in my collection right now. It, it is, it's brighter than most of those lights. And the only reason that I haven't full on switched to this light is because it has that same, you know, mode memory user interface. It also doesn't have a moonlight mode. Like the low mode on this thing is way too bright. Uh, it's, it says like 40 lumens or something like that. I'm telling you, it is way brighter than it needs to be. 
uh, for a low mode. So that's really the biggest reason. But as far as versatility, because it can use double A's, this thing is fantastic. And even using a pair of double A's, it's still 500 lumens. It is ridiculous. I highly recommend checking out this light. I tried a larger variation with the same technology and it was good, but it got hot really fast. This feels like the perfect balance. And I think that the emitter that they have that they're working with actually works better in um, flashlights that use double A's and triple A's more so than the larger batteries. Cause it, it gets so bright. You're just like, what's the point? I mean, it's just so insane. This actually has more potential to make it into my pocket and be used on a regular basis. And I like the form factor as well. I would love to see a single AA variation of this. That would be incredible. Or, you know, I'd also like to see potentially a AAA variation as well using the same emitter. I think that that would be incredibly interesting. We could start seeing numbers at like three to 400 lumens using a 10440 in that flashlight, and that would be truly spectacular to be able to see a light produce that much light and be that small. So hopefully they see this and they consider it, but I can say right now that the MT2A is no joke. This is a seriously, seriously bright flashlight and um, a very good consideration. It has mode memory, and that's pretty much all you need to know. It has a good reversible clip I have used before, no problem on a hat, and uh, yeah, great light. Oh, I should probably should show this before we leave on this part. This is the battery that it comes with. You can see the type uh, type C port and is basically a double 14500. You don't want to use two 14500s in series. This light kind of fixes, uh, sorry, this battery kind of fixes that problem. So pretty cool. This actually comes with the light as well. So that's part of the price that you're paying when you purchase it. So just keep that in mind. Now, last but not least is this awesome multi-tool from a company called Levergear. Now, I have actually reviewed Levergear products in the past, but not for a long time. They have in, been in the background coming up with all kinds of really awesome EDC gear. In fact, I'll put a link to their website that's highly recommended. This is much smaller than I expected from the images. They really should have put something in there so you could get a relative size comparison. This is way smaller, which is a great thing. So it has a bottle opener, it has a two-dimensional Phillips, and it has a pry tool that are immediately obvious. It also has a magnetic retaining bit driver right here. The magnet I didn't know about, that's awesome. So really good design. And this is to cap everything off. It actually has a craft blade holder right there. That is such a good design. And it also locks out that one, by the way, it kind of you can have a lock to keep it from moving forward. So I love everything they've done with this. Now the comparison is immediately going to go to the Prybrid from Gerber. And you can see just how much smaller the lever gear variation is. And actually I would say a bit more, well, versatile. The fact that this doesn't have a bit driver in addition to being bigger. And uh, yeah, I, it doesn't also have measuring parts here, which actually could come into play. So overall, I'd say this is a fantastic offering from this company. They should be very impressed. And because it's also so thin, this could fit in a lot of places that, like I'm still thinking in my head of all the different slots and different organizers that this can fit in and how versatile this tool may end up becoming. And so I, I actually really, really like this tool. And I, I really wish I had found this before I made my video on EDC uh, utility knife blades because I probably even would have included it over the Gerber. That's how much I like it. So keeping this in mind, I think you want to keep an eye on this. I will uh, see if I can find a discount code for Lever Gears website. I'll try to reach out to them, but this is definitely one of my favorite things they have made in recent memory and they have done a fantastic job. So nice job from Lever Gear and definitely worth a pickup if you like these sort of small multi-tools with different functions. So this is everything we covered today. And I wanna to say a big thank you once again for checking in. We have this video series happening pretty much every single week. So in addition to this video, we have the one that I posted earlier today, and there will be another one next week. I still have a lot to talk about. 
As always, thank you guys so much for your time, and we'll talk again soon.